There we go. Hello, Patricia. Hello, Amanda. Yay. Hi. It's Monday. It's time for some good book recommendations. Um, how was your weekend? Patricia, how was your weekend? It was, it was fine. It was nice. Yeah. You just said, okay, so um, for those that aren't familiar, well, we didn't really talk about where everybody lives, but Patricia, you were just saying you live right outside of Santa Fe, New Mexico. And, yes, I do. And yeah. you said it just started to snow there. Well, today so. is cold. We've had a little yeah. off and on uh, snow flurries the last couple of days. Yeah. Nothing so, really sticking, but it's a little colder than it's been. I think you get our, you know, so that was our weather like yesterday was was cold yeah. and windy. And so it's kind of headed your yeah, way. Yeah, we've now. had a lot of wind. Yeah, it was really windy. I was it Saturday night was so windy here in California. I mean, it was, wow. I mean, I, I, unusual for us to have that kind of wind, except for the yeah. Santa Ana's, which come the other way, which is a whole other thing. Mandy, you, you, we've talked about where you live. You're up in the LA, you're up in the, um, you're Riverside, are you Riverside County? Oh, no. no. LA County girl. LA here. County girl. And San God. Gabriel Valley, thank you very much. Oh, why, where was I? Oh, God. <sighs> Not that we know, not that there's anything against There's Riverside nothing County. wrong. No, no, no. no. I'm probably born and raised, no, kind of born in Lindo, but raised in the San Gabriel, born actually born yeah. and raised in the San Gabriel Valley. Uh, San Dimas. Oh, that's right. That's right. Sorry. Yep. Bill and Ted, two cool dudes from San Dimas. There you go. Love <laughs> it. We're going on an adventure. An Love excellent, it. I know. An excellent adventure. All right. We had some great wrecks last week. We're going to do some great wrecks this week. So Patricia, why don't you start us off? Well, we have an exciting book that's about to come out from Princeton University Press. I represent Princeton and Yale in the West. Pretty thrilling to have Jhumpa Lahiri on our list. Mm, a book of really essays, exciting. translating myself and others. It's really a lovely book and uh, a collection of very candid, very disarming uh, personal essays by the Pulitzer Prize winning author and translator, whom, as we know, you know, has kind of move between uh, English and Italian, embraced Italian. Uh, why Italian? You know, she was asked, uh, I, I felt the need to have a relationship with the language. So she, she has a number of short pieces. Uh, I, I, they're very fresh, they're very new. Uh, uh, this was really brought together at Princeton. It's not just a sort of, you know, gathering of things that have been published. Um, she has a project ahead, which is kind of exciting. Uh, coming up with modern library, she will be translating Ovid's Metamorphosis. And her essays here are about that process, uh, how that began, uh, working with her partner, Yelena Barras, uh, working at Princeton, the environment of this exquisite library and text that she's working with, very intertwined uh, with the illness and death of her mother, uh, Metamorphosis of a Life. Uh, so here it is, a lovely book. It'll be, be coming in soon to Warwick's, uh, translating that, myself. That is definitely a Warwick's customer title for sure. Um, so that's really exciting. You said it's coming soon, so it's not quite out yet? I don't think it's been shipped yet. Uh, okay. I have an advance, but it'll be there okay. shortly. Right. So good to pre-order. So that's what I love about the pre-order. It's like pre-order people. It's, you know, you can pre-order it and then you forget about it. And then you all of a sudden this lovely book arrives on your doorstep it's like oh, yeah it's the fun that's the fun of the pre-order all right amanda what do you have for us today i'm sorry but it looks like oh i can't share my screen and it sounds oh, like wait. my gardeners are that's all right the, the gardeners are okay that's no problem i'll get okay. i just got your screen share done yeah all right so i'm super excited i have been waiting so long to finally say this book is here today yay so uh, we have Run, Rose, Run um, from the exquisite Dolly Parton and James Patterson. Um, Dolly also has an album that dropped with the same title, Run, Rose, Run. Um, I mean, what I mean, what can I say about this book that, you know, we're just super excited. Uh, it's a young girl um, on her journey to stardom in Nashville. Uh, so when I found out about this book, I just was over the moon. Dolly is just a national treasure. 
Um, and, you know, I mean, through her song, she herself is a wonderful storyteller. So to be able to bring her story talent to a novel um, with none other than James Patterson is just a great collaboration. Um, I know since we announced this book, just everybody has been so excited to get this book. Um, so here it is out today, today, not tomorrow, today. Uh, all of our James Patterson's come out on a Monday. I don't know why actually, but they do, which is fine, which is cool. They get their own special day. Um, and of it's course, because exactly. it's James Patterson. It's James. <laughs> and this one is James Patterson and Dolly yeah, Parton. Dolly Parton. I mean, yeah. come on now. You can't ask for more uh, powerhouse duo than that by any means. Um, so yay, there you go. Run, Rose, run out now. Okay, so we were part of the big group, I guess yep. last night was like, yep. They had 150 independent bookstores that participated in promoting the event that they were doing. So found out some really little interesting little tidbits like um, the new album is obviously based on this or but was in collaboration during yeah. the same time period. In the book, there are the lyrics. So which is really and then it's like, oh, did the characters write some of the lyrics? It's like so it's really this really great kind of intermixing between her album and the book and um, it was a great little interview that they did yesterday and I know that was no I mean no as soon as they announced it everybody just jumped on was like I must be a part of this and oh yeah I think it I mean, was, she's a she's a freaking she's icon a, every you know what here's the thing everybody loves Dolly I don't right. care who you are Right. You love Dolly Parton, you know, yeah. I don't, I've never met anybody who doesn't like Dolly Parton, right. no matter what, even if people are like, oh, I don't like country music, but you know, as soon as Jolene comes, you're batting out Jolene. Oh, yeah. you know, you are. Right. Well, so. and she just is, um, I mean, the, both her and James Patterson, the philanthropic yes. core that is the core of who they are and children's literacy Absolutely. is just something to just be in awe of. Um, yeah, I mean, her so, imagination library, I didn't uh, know about that until, you know, only just a few years ago. And when right. I found out, I was like, oh my God, that is amazing. Yeah. And the power of reading, she's always been an advocate for reading and how right. it's been helping her in her life and giving back to the community um, yeah. that, you know, that she grew up in uh, is just phenomenal and all the things she does. And then she just announced that she's providing tuition for all of her employees. Right. At, at Dollywood, which is, you know, she values education too. So, I mean, she just loves to give back and, you know, for education and literacy. And like you said, James Patterson is a huge champion of the independent bookstores. So, right. um, yeah. you know, it was, was just, really it was, yeah, everybody in the chat is like, who doesn't like, exactly, who does not love Dolly? I mean, it right. is just, uh, she is universally beloved. So anyways, yeah, yeah, so that was fun to be a part of. So yes, and if you did, if you happen to buy the book from us for the event, those shipped out today or you can pick it up. We got plenty of stock at the store. So there you go. All right, Patricia, what do you have for us next? Well, it is National Women's Month. It's uh, tomorrow is Na International Women's Day. And we have La Jolla author Lillian Faderman's yes. Big History Woman uh, just out. I uh, should be in the store, uh, The American History of an Idea. Uh, we, she traces sort of historical patterns of misogyny across every era of American culture. Uh, she really looks deeply at a thread throughout of indigenous lives of uh, uh, all of the people who've come to America, immigrant uh, voices of all kinds. Uh, Federman is quite extraordinary herself. She's won seven Lambda Literary Awards. She's won the Stonewall Book Award twice. Uh, she wrote our biography of Harvey Milk, which did right. extremely well across California, A Gay Revolution, Odd Girls and Twilight Lovers. But here she's just really giving us a, a fabulously big and comprehensive picture of woman in America. It has some, uh, some uh, fine uh, historical illustrations throughout, which are kind of interesting to look at. I like this. Uh, baseball team from Vassar back in the day. Uh, she shows us uh, women's suffrage pictured as uh, leaving your children starving on the street uh, should that vote be given. Uh, she has a lot of extraordinary activists and stories up to the current day, uh, Japanese American internment, uh, Dolores Huerta of the United farm workers, Angela Davis. So she has, a, she has a lot of exciting things to point out in, in our history. 
Um, and just a great book to have for this month and, and solid the, for the future. Perfect book for this month. We are looking to host her, but unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to get her into March time frame, which I would have loved to oh, for the yeah. National Women's Month. But yeah. I think that's a perennial, that's going to be one of those perennial she's, books she's, that she's, she's in your have. neighborhood and yeah, and it'll just find its right time for a good, right. good conversation. Yeah, Sounds no, wonderful. it'll be a fantastic conversation. I'm looking forward so. to that. So look for, look for that. We're still working on trying to find some dates. Um, we're starting, whew, we're actually starting to go back to some in-person stuff. Um, pretty people are tiptoeing back in. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it seems like everybody, we've all of a sudden got a flood of a bunch of authors that are ready to come out and mm -hmm. do some events. So um, we were tiptoeing, but they're kind of pushing us over the edge of the pool. So. <laughs> yeah. People are ready. People are so, ready to get together. Exactly. So it's, we're it's diving coming. in. It's coming. It's place to get together as a bookstore. Surely. You know, we did have one, was it last week before last, I guess. Um, which was one of the first ones since the PA. We did some, you know, not to say anything was wrong with it, but it, it was the first one that felt almost back to normal, you know, even though people were in masks, but it was just the energy was better because the other ones that we had, there was still sort of this people with their shoulders up and it just didn't quite feel mm -hmm. right, you know, um, but that one was sort of feeling like, yeah, we're at San Diego's done a pretty good job with numbers and stuff. So I think that that was another yeah. reason why people are feeling a little bit more secure um with with gathering again so anyways yeah so together. looking forward to looking forward to hosting her for sure can't wait to get oh, that good that would be to hear that fabulous event it'll be okay amanda what do you have next next up here we go so i have the farland uh, Far Land by Brandon Presser. Um, so this is kind of an interesting uh, little book that I have for you guys today. Um, so this uh, Far Land, 200 Years of Murder, Mania, and Mutiny in the South Pacific. Um, so this book, uh, written by journalist Brandon Presser, recounts 230 years of Pit Crane. Pit Crane? I'm sure I butchered the name of that. It's which is a small island in the South Pacific, um, which is about the size of Central Park. And it was originally, uh, the population was originally mutineers, um, you know, pirates, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and today it maintains a population of about 40 residents. Uh, so Presser decided to go and spend time uh, with the descendants of these original inhabitants um, to kind of research and talk about the history of this little island. He lived with uh, two different families while he was there and they brought together these really wonderful, colorful stories about love, greed and betrayal. Um, so it's a, you know, it's a, it's a time in history that, you know, people are always fascinated about, but this is a little island that I know myself, I have never heard of, um, and just kind of, you know, how it, you know, what happened there in this island um, and how, you know, it leads to these still today, 40 people that live there, which doesn't seem like a lot, um, but kind of an interesting little bit of history right here with this little bit of island there. So there you go, The Far Land uh, by Brandon Presser. I love that Tom Hanks gave it a little bit of a blurb there. Does he read the the audio? Do you know? <laughs> you know, I don't actually know who reads the audio on this one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, of course, he's great to do it. He was marooned on an island himself. Uh, I know. That's what I'm kind of thinking there. Yeah, so exactly. there you go. I kind of love yeah. that a lot. So, <laughs> and, and I love a, going yeah. back to going back to Patricia to your book and the women's. You what are, um, Beth was saying online here. It's like look at who we have on the screen here. All these like. <laughs> woman power and Warwick's is woman owned. So, I mean, it's just, <laughs> you go. it's perfect. I know. Right behind I me, my four granddaughters contributing to, right? Exactly. Lots of women power there. Lots of women power. Not to say <laughs> there's anything wrong with Tom and Gabe and Steve when they come on, but you know. <laughs> Yeah, we'll that them, sounds wonderful. I, I, I will give my dad credit. He did raise me to be a strong, independent woman, though. So he's quite the feminist. He is for sure. Yeah, really, yeah your dad, your dad definitely we've all is. Seen. Yeah. I love, yeah, your dad is yeah. definitely woman power. So he, and he, Beth, he, he, if he would be like right within a, like the girls, he has like his, his girls that he calls and his little group of friends. Oh, I'm hanging out with the girls tonight. And uh, so he would totally fit in perfectly with us too about all these books. So I know I love him. He's so good. You know, Beth, I love it. So on me in uh, Albuquerque as a buyer, oh. I've known him a long time. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So what store were you at? Uh, Gabe called on me at Living Batch. Okay. And might have called on me at uh, Page One. We're, this was quite a while ago. Yeah. Because I've 
been on the road for University Press for a long time. Yeah, but it's it, it's it's a it's a small family of books of book people. We all are very we kind of yeah, all great book move people. around. Yep. Yeah, I, I love, love that uh, island book. I was thinking of that that wonderful book on the Polynesian diaspora, Sea People. You know that book by Christina Thompson. That is a fabulous book. No, I don't think I know that one. It's out maybe two either. years ago. Okay. I imagine. Okay. That's a great one. Well, um, but I love Beth on here is talking about, um, I guess you must have just ordered a, book, a box of books from Warwick's. And Beth, did they just show up? But she says that nothing better than opening a box of books from Warwick's while watching Tea Time. So <laughs> we love that too, Beth. I love it. Um, like getting good but i mean i we get a lot of book mail just for publishers and stuff and i mean i'm still like a little kid it's like Ooh, what's in here i love it too i know i go what pick I, up my boxes and it's like oh let me get the box cutter and just what, I, and what I, I get today exactly all right we're going we're blowing through today so lightning round third choice whatever you want to call it patricia take it away just going to show you a couple of books for this particularly a painful, terrible time that we're going through uh, with uh, Ukraine and Russia. Uh, Yale has an extraordinary footprint in publishing in that part of the world. Uh, a lot of history, a lot of current events. I've sent uh, Warwick's a list of that. But I'm just going to uh, focus on Ukrainian author and poet Serhiy Zadon. Mm -hmm. uh, he is quite a remarkable uh, writer, this nightmarish vision of Eastern Ukraine has gotten a great deal of publicity. One of the 20 best books of 2021 from PW. It's kind of like McCormick's The Road, a story okay. of an uncle trying to rescue his uh, nephew from an orphanage. What was the title of that one again? It's called The Orphanage, a novel. Orphanage. We have it in uh, Ingram's Gap program right now. Uh, it will be accessible there until our reprint comes in. Got it. Okay. Uh, we also have uh, on our list his poetry, uh, What We Live For, What We Die For. Uh, of course, the Ukrainian conflict has been going on since 2014, so a deeply rooted imagery. And we even have a third book by Zadon, Mesopotamia. Uh, which I remember reading quite extraordinary interlocked uh, six stories, like six short novellas that interlocked in a certain way. So an author to know uh, literature and translation, of course, opens the world to us in an extraordinary way. And Yale's program is, is really extraordinary in that area. I'm so glad that you highlighted these because I know that customers, everybody has been clamoring to try to figure out you know they they want to know more and learn more and even though I, we all should know that this has been going on since 2014 but now it's in our face and so it's it's just yeah um, yeah there's there's a lot I'll, I'll i'll send you also uh that list we have a collection uh of, of books and i've also been bringing in books myself from other publishers uh i'm sure the the desire for these books is everywhere as right. we try to dig deeper well dig deeper and support those authors i mean there's so many different layers uh, are learning more is one but also supporting that those arts too and supporting right. those authors is super yeah. important too so thank you for that very much okay amanda bring it yeah. home yeah all right so my last book here we have uh, as you know i tend to do a children's title mm -hmm. so this is a young adult title um this is called the truth about white lies by olivia cole uh, so after her cherished grandmother passes, uh, Shania moves to a new town that is in the process of being gentrified. A white high school student at a majority white high school, Shania fits in with most of the school. Her new friends are split on how they approach race and rumors swirl around a popular boy who had an altercation with a black student who no longer attends the school. With mystery elements that connect Shania's family's history to the present, the truth about white lies taunts pacing realistically Oh, sorry, taunt, taunt pacing realistically shows the harm in maintaining a code of silence around whiteness and race. So Olivia Cole deconstructs race in this hard hitting contemporary YA book about the consequences of not using your voice and white privilege to actively work against racism and calling out white supremacy. Uh, so obviously this is going to be a very um, 
important book. It is a serious book tackling race um, and what it means to be, you know, someone who is white and encountering racism and how you react and how those around you react and what you what you can do um, in some ways. I mean, it's not necessarily a how-to guide by any means, um, but you know, definitely it shows the struggle that a lot of people encounter. What can I do uh, to, you know, stem, you know, to stop this racism and, and as a person as a person who's white, you know, what what is my role and what can I do? Um, which I know a lot of people struggle with. How do you you know, I think everybody, how do you address these situations and how can you handle them? Um, and especially in teens, it's, you know, it's it's very difficult for them to, you know, understand and, and how to approach these subjects. Well, and giving, uh, them the, giving them the tools and the words and the things that, you know, and, and making it so that, I mean, the whole thing with teenage and preteen is that they think that they're the only ones going through it. And it's the first right. time that they've gone through it. And it's just like helping guide them through, it's just like, here's some help you know and and, and, and the, the teen years is when a lot of um you know these kids are suddenly faced with these situations um on either side whether they are you know the ones who um are seeing racism for the first time as a as a white person or you know a person of color who's experiencing racism for the first time um this is about that age where it begins to happen and you it's more, like i said it's more prevalent in your face at that at that age group um, and it's something that you need to understand and, and, and how to deal with, which is always very difficult. So, you know, I think this, this story is really wonderfully written and it, it just, you know, encapsulates, you know, this one uh, young woman's uh, journey through this. Um, so I just think it's a really fabulous book to have out. Um, not that it matters, but is the author white or um, of color? Not that it really matters though. You know, I actually don't know off the top of my it doesn't matter because it doesn't really matter i mean i don't even know why i asked it <laughs> i don't actually <laughs> honestly yeah, yeah. um know. okay so i'm going to talk about one that is way far away but it's one that i just finished so i'm just going to pop it on your radar right now and just say that you heard it here first um the one that i'm going to tell you about is a book that's coming out i think it's in july yeah it looks like it's july there hold on one quick second Let me get my screen share up oh my goodness you think after two and a half years i'd figure this out but you know here we go fellowship point it is such a good book um it's a big it's feeds my soul. It's one of those 600 pagers, which I adore because I love diving into characters. And this one, sometimes people say, oh, and it's too long. Oh, it should have been edited. Oh, this, oh, that. Mm -mm. Nope. This one's got it all. It's a great story. Two women, um, their friendship. It goes between the early sixties and present day. The present day narrators are in their eighties. They're women who've been friends for all those years. It's about a, a fellowship point is a place in Maine. Um, it just covers indigenous, you know, what, what they should do with the land, but really at the core of it, it's a, it's uh, speaking of women in history, it's a women's um, friendship story. And so um, there you go. That is, um, oh my God, I just can't can't wait for everybody to be able to read this so look for that coming in july and i think amanda wants to pop back on and talk about an event that we're having this week we got a we got a couple good ones so i think she's gonna talk about one i might share what share our screen for that too in a minute actually if you want to keep sharing julie um no because i don't have it ready yet <laughs> okay um i can share that i think can you see? Yep. Yeah. So this Wednesday, um, I'm very pleased to be, um, you know, nominally hosting an event with uh, Dr. Dan Werb, who wrote this very important book, The Invisible Siege, The Rise of Coronaviruses and the Search for a Cure. And I'm just going to read a couple of the blurbs from the back because they're from really important people in the field. Um, Richard Preston, the author of The Hot Zone says, sparkling poetic and with passionately accurate storytelling, Dan Werb's book takes us on a journey into the origins of COVID-19 and the discovery of vaccines and potential cures. I learned so much that I didn't know before. Above all, I met the subtle 
warriors of the laboratory who are working to save all of us from the horror of new pandemics. And uh, Eric Topol, the director of Scripps Research Translational Institute, says, through remarkable storytelling, Dan Werb illuminates the long history of the coronavirus family, how we were amply forewarned by the SARS and MERS epidemics, and how the science community has rallied to successfully take on SARS-CoV-2 and ultimately prevail over COVID. So it's a very serious book, but it's also hopeful. And his writing style is, uh, this is just excellent science writing and very readable. Um, and I hope you'll join the event this Wednesday. It's on Facebook Live at 4 p.m. Uh, Dan is awesome. And I think um, there'll be a lot of people there too. He's, he's a beloved person in, he, he's a faculty member at UCSD, um, as well as in, I think, at the University of Toronto. So he has a lot of local fans here. And I'll stop sharing. Okay, perfect. Yep, looking forward to that one. And then I've got just, I'm gonna just preview some other fun things we've got going on this week. Tomorrow is what a memoir that I adored, Never Simple. This is Liz is going to be in conversation with Sarah Sleeper, who's a local here in San Diego. Uh, we have an event with Joe and the Mission Bayoho Library. We are not like them on Wednesday. Um, I think this one's after Dan. So join Dan, go get something to eat, come back and join us for Joe. And then Kelly Garrett's going to be in conversation with um, S.A. Crosby from Razor Blade Tears and Black Chop, Black Top. God, what's his other book? Come on, Amanda, uh, help me here. Razor, razor blade tears. Razor blade tears. I already said that one. What's the oh, other and one? Black, blacktop wasteland. Backtop wasteland. Oh, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> but this book, I mean, everybody's so Don Winslow was excited about it. Lots of people are excited about Like a Sister. So join us on Thursday at five if you can. So lots of good events. We've got some in store events coming up. So another good week of recommendations. Thank you, Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Patricia. Appreciate it. Oh, look who just entered the room. Kim DeVoe at 4.30. Oh my God. I'm wow. sorry. I'm sorry. So I'm going to let her in. Um, Patricia and Amanda, if you need to go, feel okay. free. Because I'm going to let Kim do her. You guys have already done your thing. So I'm going to let her do her thing for the next. So you can stay if you want or if you've got to go, I understand. I love getting more recommendations. So. Okay, if you're staying on, that's fine with me. That's Patricia, you, you can stay or go. It's up to you. <laughs> Kim. We're She's Kim, coming. wherever you are. She's coming, slowly but surely. We're, we're letting you in. Oh, this is this is live. Well, we, yeah, okay, so Dolly Parton, just while I'm filling time while Kim's coming on. So Dolly Parton's microphone yesterday had like a situation happen. And so they were all like acting like, oh no, should we go in and and some guys crawling in the back trying to fix her microphone. And then finally it was just like, you know, she's like, this is live people. This is what it's like being live. And you just have to just kind of go with it. So Gotta go with it. That's what we're doing here. So Kim, I don't, I don't think Kim can hear us yet. I don't I can't so. see her yet. So she'll be out here in a second. So too funny. But somebody was on, um, I think it was Beth who, no, Sarita. I think it was you. I don't know if you're still on with us, Sarita, but you had read, um, oh, which was the book that, she, that Kim recommended last week? Um, oh, yeah, Sarita was um, The School for Good Mothers um, is what- Oh, that's right, that's right. Kim recommended last week, so Sarita read that. See, this is what I love about this. It's like we recommend people go out and they read them and then they come back and they tell us about it. So That's my favorite part of book selling. Sharing my love of books with other people, and then them come back. Oh my god, I loved it. What else right. is there? Right. Yeah. It just it just uh, that's that um, validation that we all yeah. love and adore. So. I love it best with kids. That was my favorite part when you recommend kids books because if kids, you know, like adult, they you know they'll read a lot of things, but kids are so picky that like, oh my god, come back no. and tell you that they love it. Right. Okay, Kim, I'm giving you like a minute or two here. <laughs> I can mention another book too. Go ahead. Go ahead, Amanda. Go for it. We're um, here for book recommendations. Th this is this is a pre-order alert for y'all. Um, Pulitzer Prize winning author of A Visit from the Goon Squad, Jennifer oh. Egan, has a new book out. Uh, it's April 5th, I believe, The Candy House. 
and I read I've that. Just, yeah. Did you read yeah. it? I, I just started it. Yeah. Oh, I have, I've, I'm actually, yeah, it's a, <laughs> I don't want to say, I don't want to use the profanity that I was about to use about this. It's, it, it's mind bending. It's so yes. good. It's yeah. so and, good, uh, but it's just if, like. And while, while supplies last, if you pre-order, um, we have a tote bag to give away that is, it mimics oh, this dude. cover art. It's pretty cool looking. So cool. just to let okay. you know that's available. Kim just went away. So we'll see what's going on with Kim. I don't know if she's going to come back on, but wait a minute. I wanted to look, what did I say? I can't remember what I said about um, the candy house. I've got to go look again because it was just like, it was one of those books that, well, it's a, it's a companion or whatever she calls to the goon squad. It's you do not have to read the goon squad to read this one um, at all. Cause it's like some minor character that, that she pulls in to like be one of the major characters in this one. Um, did you read Goon Squad, Amanda? No, I haven't. I'm yeah. I mean, I feel it's, like it's I'm the last last person on earth who didn't read that book, right? But it's like so. That's the thing that um. That's the thing that you know. What did I say? I said I love a novel that challenges the form and makes the reader think, think, think. Because <laughs> that's what she does. I mean, you're reading this book and it's just like, oh my god, she brings up lots of stuff in that one. So, but it's one All of those right. books that. I mean, from the very first page, I was with the characters already. Like, oh yeah. I, oh, no. I don't know who they, they are, but I'm 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 with them. I'm there. Yeah, that's yeah. how I was with it too. So it was definitely though one of those that you just sort of um, you just that's how you have to approach the whole book. You just have to go with these characters and just go where she takes you um, for it. All right, I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna have to probably I'm gonna just say goodbye and Bummer. i know poor okay. kim I, but she's not texting okay. me either so i don't know so you know, the good news is, is that we'll have her next week and so we'll have her recommendation so it'll be a mystery on what kim's got for us next week unless she wants to send you her recommendations and you put them in the e-blast which is fine with me too so i don't know she always has those immaculately crafted recommendations that she shares here so that i love i'd um, almost rather wait <laughs> I think I would too, because that's her whole, her whole appeal is that. So I would rather wait as well. So um, with that, I'm going to sign off and say good night to Facebook and to the recording. So if you're watching this on YouTube, good night too. So thanks everybody for watching. Thank you, Patricia Thank you. and Amanda. Thank you very much.